Morph, hit the sound. We gotta get the cheers going. We've got an awesome panel here. We've got a crew of WebXR devs, and today's topic is going to be developing for WebXR. Um, joining us on the stage, we've got M. Uh, I think I got it wrong. It's M sub two official, right? Not M two sub official. It's M sub two, yeah. Yeah, got it. M sub two official, welcome. One cool thing about uh, M sub two is that he, uh, if you see on the screen over there, he wrote uh, the awesome WebXR repo and has a whole bunch of awesome WebXR um, projects himself and uh, created the WebXR Discord, which is where um, a lot of the, most of the community hangs out in. We are working on um, virtual and augmented reality experiences on the web. We've got sitting next to him, let me know if I'm saying this right, Sriel XR. Welcome. Yeah. Give, us a, give us a little bit of background. Uh, sure. Um, so I've been a WebXR developer since um, five years now, I think. Almost five years, four and a half years. Uh, we started off when it was called WebVR with um, creating a for, uh, games for for WebXR and uh, also creating games for it. And now, nowadays, I work full time on WebXR experiences with uh, clients and as well as our own projects. So we've launched Boulder over uh, last year and uh, the year before that, um, I've worked on a spring experience called Spray Space, which are nominated for Police this year. And uh, yeah, I just try to push the boundaries of what games in WebXR are and to make better content that's what i do awesome and i want to actually um you know go back to m sub two uh give us a little bit of background about yourself uh, as well just um, a little quick intro yeah sure i mean you covered a lot of it like i made the webxr discord made that repo i do a lot for uh, webxr ever since like september of 2020 um yeah right now um i currently work with um Zesty, where um, I do a few things. Uh, one of them, uh, last year we released a multiplayer uh, first-person shooter called Robot Rally. And um, I also helped to maintain um, integrations with um, various uh, Web3D and uh, WebXR frameworks to uh, let people be able to monetize their uh, virtual spaces. Let's go. Um, we actually have Zesty integration here in Hyperfy. Uh, if yeah, I open so. up my menu. Uh, yeah, the Zesty um, app is in here. Now that being said, we are in the middle of um, making like some pretty big changes to it, so it's not going to work for too much longer. But gotcha, gotcha. Um, Codefrau, give us a little bit of uh, background. Hi. Um, I've been doing VR since the late 90s. Um, that was interesting. There was still SGI workstations and, and things. And um, then right now I'm a co-founder of Croquet. I'm the chief architect there. It's a little startup in LA. Um, oh yeah, that's a it's our website. Um, at the very top of the website, it's going to load a world. It takes a while. Oh, there we go. Um, Croquet comes out of a small talk project in the early 2000s. And the current version is JavaScript. Um, it runs on the web. Um, we do use WebXR, but the more interesting part about it is that it's running on Croquet OS, which is a distributed op uh, OS for the web um, that 
allows you to write multiplayer apps without ever writing server code. So it's all running client side, it's synced. Um, and on top of that, we built Microverse, uh, which is open source, um, whereas um, CrookOS itself is not. Um, the Microverse um, environment, that's our, that's the part that does support WebXR, even though it's still somewhat rudimentary. It's not our primary platform at the moment. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get better at that. And um, I I come out of the open source community for like 25 years. And uh, so I'm, I'm a very big fan of um, co-creating the future. That is awesome. So this, uh, yeah, I'm um, just kind of looking through it here. And um, what's kind of interesting is that, you know, no matter what framework or um, tech stack, as long as we're kind of building on the web, it can all be linked together. And that's kind of what's really exactly. special about the WebXR community is that there's kind of just some natural alignment between all of our projects and that we could connect these things and um, they can become greater than the sum of their parts. Great, totally. Um, so Earthworm Jim, welcome. Uh, I've got your name hey, tag nope. as uh, the project that many know you by. Give us a little bit of background um, and intro. Hi, good evening. Um... I'm um, based in the Netherlands. I uh, used to be a long, long time ago a professional programmer, but I've been uh, leading teams uh, ever uh, since. Um, I'm currently in the IoT space, actually. I'm a product manager somewhere. Um, but for a hobby, I, I really like uh, the WebXR, um, all of, all of it around everything around that. Um, I started out with that about four or five years ago, um, just playing around with A-frame, etc. And at some point, uh, I got carried away with um, with my Smooth Voxels uh, project. I'm I'm ho a hobby programmer usually, so I've I've a, a hard disk with I don't know 500 unfinished projects, but um, this was one I actually uh, managed to finish at some point because I thought it might actually be um, useful for other people and it's slowly being picked up for, um, you've been using it for wearables, uh, web space is using it. So uh, I'm really happy about that. Yeah, no, I love it, uh, SVox. Um, dude, it's so powerful because not only is like voxels very accessible for world building, like 3D modeling, but this turns it into something that is a open format you know, GLTF and um, we've got actually like uh, your booth and we could do this. Uh, sorry about the lag, but I just kind of want to show a little bit of this behind the scenes uh, for the camera. Yeah, so the booth is actually uh, just one magic uh, voxel model and everything uh, comes from that. So uh, indeed uh, that works. That was actually oh, quite wow. fun for me to do as well because I usually make small stuff that that's sort of what you do mostly with with voxels and make a lot of uh, small stuff but uh, making something a bit larger is actually a lot of fun and yeah. easier than i thought if you uh turn behind you 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 may see it just kind of like lurking in the corner yep. there <laughs> oh that's the new one that's good yep that yeah so smooth voxels is something that can also convert a bunch of Vox models into GLTF via a CLI tool. Check that out on GitHub. We'll drop a link in the description. Um, cool. And we also have some really awesome guests in the studio. And I want to give a quick round for folks to kind of make an intro. We've got this uh, classy looking penguin here. Um, you want to give a quick intro? We'll just do a... Am I the classy penguin? Yes. Hi, all. So my name is Christian. I'm based out of San Francisco. I come from a more uh, traditional uh, front-end development background. Um, and my interest in WebXR is I, I'm working on a way to use uh, web components um, 
to kind of encapsulate a lot of the logic of making UIs for worlds uh, so that you could uh, just write in JSX uh, divs, spans, you know, buns and stuff like that um, and style them using CSS, but then the rendering output uh, would be in WebGL in whatever world, kind of like you're trying to embed that in. Um, and yeah, I'm super interested in the space and trying to learn from all of you and uh, seeing what's out there in terms of. Oh, yeah. Nar, you want to give a quick intro? If not, it's cool. Um, who's that next to him? Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't have mic on, but welcome all, welcome. So uh, let us first, the first topic I wanted to talk about is current projects. And um, I think let's uh, kind of discuss it from the POV of maybe some of the challenges that you're facing in uh, creating what you're working on. And we will just start out with uh, M sub two. Sure. Yeah, so um, I got a couple personal projects that are kind of like in the works at the moment. Um, the first one, uh, the furthest along, is a, um, a recreation of the very first uh, VR game that I ever made, actually, called uh, Lemon Atoll. Um, it was the first time I'd ever touched Steam VR in Unity, and I made a my first ever VR game for a three day game jam where nobody else made a VR game, and it got <laughs> really bad ratings because <laughs> no one could play it. But like the gist would be that you you're on like a is it online island. anywhere? Can I bring it up on the screen? Um, yeah. So you can bring up the old one. Uh, go to msub2.edge.io. Is it here? Like on. It's uh, it's not on GitHub. Um, okay, m sub two dot itch dot io. Yep, and then scroll down. Where? Yeah, lemon atoll. Yeah, so the this version uses uh, Unity with the WebXR export, but uh, I really wanted to kind of like come at it again with like uh, the experience that I've gained over the past um, couple years with WebXR and I uh, am so I'm remaking it in A-frame uh, with PhysX and I'm really far along now I'd on honestly say it looks even a bit better than it does in Unity right here uh, some of the last things that I need to take care of are just like um, in world UI basically and then adding in a couple of integrations and then uh, that will probably be like ready to launch. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and then the second thing that I have, which I've been working on on and off is, um, it's a more like narrative focused um, game and it's sort of also part of a larger um, sort of like shared universe thing that I'm like, trying to build and that's been a little more slow going if only because i guess one of my inspirations is because i obviously i've played a lot of games like you get you can tell like games are kind of like my focus it's the thing that i sort of like am building the most of with webxr and i've played a lot of walking sims uh, a lot of good walking sims too and like using video games as a narrative like medium mm -hmm. and you know having player immersion and like interaction drive you know stories forward that's the kind of thing that like really interests me and is what i'm trying to do with this if only on like a really small scale i'm trying to i guess the biggest challenge is sort of like how to how to convey like you know these things that i've experienced in you know all these like native games before how do i translate that into what i know how to do with webxr um to like you know make something that will you know resonate with people and True touch that. them and all that i mean we are kind of 
building a lot of the groundwork ourselves. It's, you know, the web doesn't have the decades of time investment that native engines have. Um, and I'm sure many here kind of experienced uh, development struggles with, you know, the, the tools to use t to create such experiences. Um, anyone have any kind of uh, thoughts on just the ecosystem around building WebXR experiences? Um, and oh, yeah. what you would kind of wish for and are struggling with at the moment. I have some thoughts on this. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, sure. So we started off with um, Unity in 2018, I think. That back then, uh, WebXR wasn't even standardized. It was WebVR working only on uh, certain browsers, not even like comparable to what it is today. And it was very difficult to get anything running on a quest, basically, that performed uh, nicely. So our first game, which is not even online anymore, was basically um, you had a crossbow and you shot like barrels that were coming down and worked fine with like an HTC Live and a PC. And when when we ran it on the Quest uh, 1, when it came out, when we got our hands on one, yeah, it was pretty bad. So we had to scale it down and it ran on like very poor frame rates and the texture were blurry all that stuff so we were obviously like thinking okay what do we do now and then because i come from a unity background so i have to learn complete web stack new and um a frame and 3js were, are just amazing things i think for making web XR content and they've only improved in the years have you then, checked out I, uh needle tools by the way i haven't i left uh Unity back in uh, 2019, I think was the last project I did. Oh, which oh, was not that's... even a WebXR project, but uh, I switched to Wonderline now. So the, the story is obviously like we were working with A-Frame and that was very tiring for people like me who don't really come from a classical web background um, to, you know, use tools that were not very visually appealing, like things like HyperFight didn't exist back then, things like um, needle tools didn't exist back then. So uh, my co-founder Jonathan Hale he was like, "Okay, let me build an engine." So he created Wonderland basically to, you know, help folks are creators like me to basically create, uh, help create folks are experiences. And um, now I use that, which is um, really fun. It's it is similar to um, component-based workflow that Unity has, um, but it's more focused on using like a web stack. So it has like node support. It has um, what is a, a site that has all the uh, like demos and experiences? So there was like, was it Construct Arcade? Uh, it's Haviar now. So Ferry over there, they uh, they're managing and running the site now. Got it. Um, yeah, I see and, it. Um, and yeah, this and, site yeah, has a bunch of WebXR experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And a lot of them are also uh, things that I've built with my team, and uh, we're also working on some of those games so uh, if you go back one of the first games we built was a barista express which is like a coffee making game if you go down um you can even play it on the browser so i haven't and, played it yeah th there's a lot here and honestly <laughs> what i when i look at this website uh i'm just like um, itching to make this into an actual arcade and you'll see um someone made a booth that would be perfect for Construct uh, Arcade. Um, Sith Lord, who isn't here at the moment, but he is going to be part of the expo soon. But this looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And um, a lot of the games are not mine. I've not worked on them, but some of them are. And um, we've just been trying to improve like what's been possible with games in WebXR um, ever since we've created. So if you start from like what White Rabbit has created, which is what we call our company. Um, since 2018, we've always pushed the agenda and we're trying to do that in the next step as well. So we have a couple of projects that are in the, their planning phase that make uh, gaming and WebXR more than what they are today. I can't really talk about them too much, but um, I hope like this year we'll make some announcements on what we're working on, what we're cooking. Nice, that's exciting. Godfrey? Yeah, I would second that. Um, like the 
The tool support for building WebXR stuff is really not great at the moment. Um, which is one reason why, why we build Croquet and we, we build it in, in a different way um, where we started with the multiplayer and kind of built the, the 3D stuff and, and all the worlds on top. Um, so it would be awesome if there was something like Unity but made for the web. Uh, lots of people are still using Unity because it's a very nice tool, but it's not really made for WebXR, right? Um, yeah. It's barely made for WebGL. <laughs> exactly. So having something like that in to make it a lot easier for people to build these rich worlds um, is, I think, hindering the progress and... Um, the then when you see some some WebXR experiences, they like they look great visually, but if we think about the like what the metaverse should be, where you really have rich multiplayer experiences, that is so much harder even than just doing getting the graphics right. Yeah, and so like yeah. multiplayer pretty much sucks in every um, in every engine um, and so yeah doing all that is really difficult uh, I yeah and, and so if, if people are interested in multiplayer they should really check out croquet I think um, because it's it's so fundamental to have everything be multiplayer by default and also have stuff that like if you have a distributed physics engine and all these kind of things that you really cannot do with with the old kind of technologies um so i think people would like that and uh the, the cool thing is the 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 multiplayer library is completely separate from our um 3d stuff um in fact our servers don't even know if you're running a 3d game or not it's um <laughs> it's really the, <laughs> the um the multiplayer thing is is the the fundamental thing and you can use it for 2d you can use it for 3d you can use it for webxr um so yeah um that's cool I, I think multiplayer really is is the the thing where people are most struggling with i agree yeah yeah. There's there's a lot of infrastructure I think that needs to be just given in certain cases things like voice chat especially spa a specialized voice chat I think mm -hmm. that a lot of game developers would really appreciate to you know having easy access to it especially since the web stack basically um, allows people to build these middleware that developers should be able to plug and play you know right um, those those things need to be really pluggable um, it's but it's uh, also the like how do you build these things um, and like one thing you, you can do in microverse is is life coding um, your experiences if you set it up the right way right um, but you can develop on your desktop and it's immediately in your headset um, and so I think those kind of experiences really need to be more common um, to make it fun to develop that stuff. Like net code is never fun to develop. Uh, so the less you have to do of that is the better. I, uh, I want to talk briefly about that live coding um, aspect in just a moment. But I also want to get to Earthworm Jim Hugh. Mm -hmm is like this tool that really, I think, lowers the barrier to entry for creating 3D models. And um, you also have made a lot of A-frame stuff and uh, and I think something that also binds a lot of us in WebXR is that it's not just about what we create, but it's about how we create things because so much kind of needs to get built um, in terms of like the web Shareability. becoming a proper game dev environments and and whatnot but yeah, um, i think yeah i think actually the 
I, I see a nice little theme going here where everyone is sort of complaining about the tooling. Um, let me at least look at it from my point. Like I said before, I'm not a professional developer. I'm not a designer at all, uh, but I do have lots of experience. I've, I've really have some extensive experience also with Unity, for instance, but I always found these tools to be really hard to use, especially for someone who doesn't do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Every time I start up, I go, oh yeah, how does this work anymore? I just forget about it because it's, if you don't continuously sort of do it, there's just too many options. I, I was playing around with... Oh, we lost you. Oh, so. You're gone. Oh no. Mm. Jim? Jim? Hello? Hello. Here you are. Here you are. Are you back? There you are. Are. Yeah. Do you still hear me? You're back, yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know where, the, where I went. Okay. But um, I actually, um, I, I was playing around with Blender a bit um, uh, this week to get my booth optimized for the expo. And again, I, I sort of went, okay, this is why I don't like these tools. They are really professional tools, basically. They're, they take a lot of work. And when I started out with A-Frame, I was amazed how quickly you could get something up and running. I was amazed that it worked everywhere. I, I was playing around with Unity and it didn't, didn't even work as a separate application without doing all kinds of complex stuff. Here it worked on my phone. I had an Oculus Go. It worked there. It worked on my desktop. I could show it in the office to someone and say, hey, look at this. That was just amazing, just being able to get everything working basically everywhere. Um, and that really felt sort of old school where you could, as a single guy in your attic, still make something that was uh, great and, and could match with the rest of the world. Um, so that's that's why I really stuck with, um, with the whole WebXR. Um, uh, and I had the same feeling, but on the other hand, even though the tools are great, it's really difficult to make something nice of it. You had lots and lots of small experiences, which are basically, I don't know, cubes and um, cones, and that's about it. And that, that's how fancy they get. And that sort of annoyed me. I thought they, this would be a great game if it did, didn't look shit like it does. So that, that's sort of what how I came into, uh, well, let me try to... to to do some stuff first, uh, you know, and uh, make a make a planet, those sort of things, uh, smooth out some stuff. And as I went along, I went, okay, this is actually quite nice. Maybe I can can sort of extend on that. And then I got into sort of an extreme feature creep, etc. So um, yeah, on the screen here, I've got uh, smooth voxels. And for folks that haven't checked it out, um, basically, I mean, here's like a good graph uh where's that apple that transforms it's all the way at the top there we go look at this i mean modeling really this in well, blender yeah. is hard mode but modeling this in a vox editor yeah it's really simple it's really simple and that that sort of i i have a lot of fun <laughs> actually uh, many nights I sort of want to do some work and actually I got stuck on just making some voxel stuff in there. It, it's so much fun to to play around with it. I got, um, uh, you can uh, load an, uh, a Magicka voxel model and then uh, play with that. But actually I, I do a lot of them just uh, hand coded and it's so easy to, to do. So um, all of these are just, yeah, just playing voxel this. models. I was gonna ask yeah, you. Yeah, this this one is actually hand coded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's just um, some simple ASCII uh, art, basically. If you ever done that in the past, that's kind of uh, hard. As hard as that is, <laughs> but it's uh, indeed. I I use uh, Marika Voxel much more uh, lately, so um, uh, that that is a lot easier. I just want to so, uh, say that this compared to if you look at the Vox model format that Magic of Voxel produces, this is so much nicer and it's smaller and it's readable. Like, um, mm -hmm. and I think this would be awesome for also if you wanted to like train AI on stuff. It's it could be very interesting from that POV too. Yeah, and it, it, this is also because it's so uh, because it's a simple text format. This is really easy to generate. I've got some examples also also online where you can just generate uh, planets and that kind of stuff. It's it's relatively so easy to to do all of that stuff because it's such a simple format to to handle. 
anyone can program it uh, to to do that stuff. So, so do you um, write code to to make this, or do you have an interactive editor? No, no, no. It's what you see on the screen. Is it? It's just a plain text file, mm -hmm. and uh, basically, it's it's like ASCII art, and uh, where you put your um, your characters, that's where your voxels are, mm -hmm. and that's about it. And then you've got yeah. layers uh, next to each really other. Cannot really see this. No, you cannot see it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. okay. That that's about it. It's just a simple text format, but it's it's yeah, so it's simple just... that especially for the smaller voxel models, you can easily easily uh, try. To me, it's like but, like um, digital clay in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's it's sort of um, I, I'm trying to <laughs> to actually do some work with this, but uh, I keep uh, sort of getting back to the tooling. But uh, I, uh, a, a, a while back I created um, Infinite Museum. Uh, that was uh, all done with uh, with smooth voxels. Uh, the link is on there as well. Yeah. That's um, it's everything you see there are, are is basically smooth voxels. So uh, if I'm you look around here, here. It's, right. it's uh you can just um, do I walk forward? Yeah, walk forward. Wow! Wait, you baked the lights, or what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that was um, actually that wasn't baked lighting yet. That was uh, manually just making uh, the voxels a bit lighter, and they're faded. So it looks like baked lighting. But I got bored with that, so in the end, I actually added baked lighting uh, to uh, to my stuff. So if you uh, <laughs> saw the booth uh, behind me uh, just uh, before, all of that is baked lighting, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is just uh, manual for stuff. Here, you just made the the tiles a bit lighter. Yeah, yeah, as wow, simple as great. that. But it looks it looks uh, really uh, great, I think. Yep. And the same goes for the lighting in the in the ceiling. Uh, it's all uh, just um, it would be just very lighter cool voxels. For, you know, going back very to cool. the uh, live editing. You know, I think that's a huge part of this. I I want to make cool stuff uh, in a collaborative environment, and uh, you know, that's been kind of um, so much of what people love about projects like Janus and. Uh, Hyperfy, for instance, and uh, Neos VR. If y'all ever been in Neos, everybody is in there building in real time. Um, meanwhile, like platforms like the Archive, they separate it from like the editing environment, uh, where it's like you're in, either in the client or you're in Unity and the editor. But uh, there is a way we could have both, you know. And I've um, there is some work done where. You could essentially overlay these uh, native apps with WebXR, and um, this was based on uh, the project Metachromium, which you could overlay WebXR uh, with alongside um, Steam VR, and kind of just how overlay programs uh, work in general. But I would love for in the future bringing up um, some like uh, screens and just any kind of world you want to hang out in and build more worlds you could but you're describing you're describing um, a native application with WebXR embedded right not the other way around correct yeah so okay. it's uh, you know basically kind of like WebXR is the fudge on top of a ice cream sundae gotcha. you know? so like uh, that's great <laughs> Yeah, over here, what you kind of see in this uh, image is basically a WebXR app um, locked to like uh, the wrist phone, and uh, in that That's amazing. that other avatar there is a player two in a party system. So it's basically like Web AR chat overlaying That's a web Steam view. VR. That's a web view. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like loading tabs nice. in 3D space. So that that there's an awesome talk about it, and it gets also into like this. I think the most underrated demo ever, which was uh, when someone basically created a cool way to do portals in between apps, and which was completely seamless between native and web, and web and web. You mm -hmm. you could have a Cross seamless domain. Yes, Mozilla wow. hubs to Gorilla Tag. Look at that seamlessness. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, this okay. needs more recognition. I mean, that this was like the most in incredible demo I've ever seen. And it's all taken in one take. I just made some GIFs out of it. Um, 
I was using Metachromium in the uh, for powering it, but I kind of see Metachromium as like a, um, a proof of concept for like browser teams to implement the means of having these kinds of uh, layers, you know, where we could author WebXR as a uh, AR and people's VR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, even just having multiple WebXR worlds, being able to combine those would be a step forward. Yep. But integrating that with native apps, wow, yep. Well, but even even not whole worlds like this actually touches in, on what I'm struggling with right now, uh, which is the the current version of the web is is a lot of components, right? Like you make something, I embed it in my website, and uh, there's all these plugins. But for WebXR, I'm finding it very difficult to combine uh, different WebXR uh, quote unquote components. Like if you made one in 3JS, one in uh, Babylon or, or whatever, mm -hmm. bringing them both into the same world or like overlaying them with one render like that. Can is... I show you something? Look on I the would screen love to here. See it. Yeah. Okay, so like what you're about to see here is loading up Mozilla Hubs. And this is all in a browser, by the way. This is ExoKit Web. So now you loaded up Hubs, Solar System, a classic sort of like uh, WebXR demo by um, Toshiro. And, and then you can kind of move them around, right? Like uh, kind of like 3D apps in cyberspace or like tabs, mm -hmm. you know, in a browser. So he's just loading up 3D mm -hmm. tabs. And then what is this, Supercraft? Um, and then CryptoVoxels, which is Babylon JS, right? Wow. So yep. you do have like three and Babylon composable together. How? I, I think the composability is, is really key. Basically, we need the equivalent of the composer in on the desktop, like the, um, the Linux desktop, which composes application outputs from different applications in 2D or 2.5D. You just need the same thing in 3D. And that way you can combine yeah. any kind of 3D thing in the same what what looks like the same world and this can be so liberating for developers like you know going back to the topic of um adding multiplayer like imagine if that was just something that you can compose into your any app you know mm -hmm. um yeah. like for example there was a uh, um a painter and if you just add a multiplayer layer over a painter then you you have like uh Exactly that, but you can do that kind of permissionlessly instead of asking support from devs in a way for them to implement it. Um, some really great ideas, and I just think that this is the future in which WebXR, uh, it's the most positive sum outcome. We don't compete with native, we could compose and uh, work together. But, um, exactly. That would be <laughs> Thank you, thing. But um, that's really but the, what the, the, oh, where Apple. I'm struggling to where I'm struggling is uh, with um, getting to that level is one is uh, performance on the current devices. I think those those are always going to be a bottleneck in terms of what we can do. Yeah, um, this is going to be probably a PC VR thing. I mean, on a Quest Two, yeah. we can you know just barely all squeeze in here. Um, and have a good performance and everything, but imagine loading multiple apps. Uh, that would be quite heavy for current today's hardware, standalone at least. Yeah, yeah I know. I know for for my for my day job, um, I work on web components that they can get embedded on uh, native apps, right? Uh, like like you said, there's, we're not in competition. We're making plugins for each other and uh there are ways like we've found that to embed not say like a full browser or a full chromium but like you can um basically make a, a little fake browser that just has the drawing capabilities so that might help uh something like that might help uh work around some of the performance constraints but you're, you don't have to load uh like a whole instance of whatever environment you want to embed true 
Um, let me get back to my notes over here. Uh, we are at the two hour mark for the WebXR community meetup and just wanna be mindful of people's time and we can um, kind of sprint through some of these, but let's do let's do a lightning round, okay? Um, you gotta answer very quick in like 10 seconds on uh, your favorite tools, starting with M sub two. Favorite tools. Uh, favorite tools, A-Frame, Waterland Engine, they're the two that I've worked with the most. Uh, you know, just it's very easy to like start getting things like in a scene, and then you know the A frame and Wonderland engine. Is, Got it. Yep. Uh, Sryl. Um, for me, it would be um, yeah, A frame Blender and Wonderland engine are, I think, essential tools for what it's there. You know, it's pretty cool. My, Chat yeah. GPT can uh, make <laughs> oh, A frame yeah. code. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Also, Blender plugins, you can basically use that to create Blender. Big plugins. fan of that. Got grants for that. Code trial, favorite tools. <laughs> the most fun tool I used, uh, okay, it's a shameless self plug, but Plop 3D. Um, that's from 20 years ago. I think it, there's still a website, P L O P P 3D, if you Google that. Um, which was an authoring tool for kids. And basically you paint something um, in 2D and then you puff it up uh, with an air pump, like a like a balloon animal, you know? Like that's, it's just so fun to use. And um, yeah, these kind of the right modeling tools for non-professionals, um, I think we need more of that. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, that's a perfect segue into uh, Jim. Uh, well, for me, of course, I'm doing A-Frame, but actually um, I'm, it, it's, it's barely A-Frame anymore. It's uh, all uh, 3AS by now. But the tool I use the most is Glitch. Everything I do is on Glitch. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. It's just online. You don't have to worry about anything. You just start typing and it's immediately updating. Uh, so. Um, it's uh, I can try out stuff um, side by side. It's great. I really love it. Wonderful. Okay. Um, and uh, quickly, uh, favorite text editor. Just kidding. All right. We're not going to get into a holy war. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the last question here is hopes for the future. And um, we're just going to take a big uh, clockwise rotation and just give us, um, you know, what are you looking forward to next for web developing for WebXR? Um, I just want to see more people doing it. Like content is one of the things where it's just like, you know, that we've got a bunch of talented devs already, but there, there just needs to be more stuff. I think. Mm. Sarah. I'm sorry. What was the question? Hopes for the future for, um, you know, just what are you looking forward to and what are your hopes for developing for WebXR? Um, so what I'm hoping for mainly is um, more interoperability standards are one thing that I would love to have so that I can, for example, use other people's avatars like here in my applications and you can just join and um, better tooling for sure so that new developers can come in more easily and aren't as scared to you know, learn all the parts of JavaScript or TypeScript or whatever frame the framework wants to do. Um, and just generally more developers, I think, in the ecosystem would be amazing to have. Agree. Code file. Um, yeah, you took my um, number one thing out of my mouth. Uh, interoperability would be the one thing I would put on top first. Um, like what Omai oh doing uh, for ex uh, is doing, for example, is so important. Um, and with that, we we can all build something in our own creative ways um, without being locked into what whatever big platform is allowing us to do. Um, but instead, we can be as creative as as the internet allows, basically. And um, yeah, that is my hope for the future. And um, the other is, OK, um, getting us better hardware. I really want AR glasses that are as light 
as my regular glasses. So hopefully soon Agreed. make it happen. I think uh, <laughs> on the interop, you know, it's gonna compound everyone's efforts together and we'll get Precisely. to the future faster. Jim, what are your hopes? Um, well, one of the things you mentioned before, I think is important being able to just jump over from any website to any other website to uh, just stay immersed in, in VR. I think that's really needed. I was sort of worried about uh, you guys talking about, uh, well, some things will probably be um, PC VR because I'm a true believer in uh, in standalone headsets. I think for especially WebXR, they are just awesome. You just pop them on and it yeah. just works. So um, I hope, uh, of course, uh, better hardware there that that um, because I think that that is a real great uh, combination if you can then move between different um, XR websites, that would be awesome. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, for me, I really hope for um, for WebXR to grow, be adopted, and for the browser to do that overlaying stuff that I was showing earlier, because then we can basically go to any kind of platform and reach more developers and creators than other places and uh, create WebXR stuff kind of as an activity, you know? Um, imagine just kind of like hanging out in VR chat and making WebXR worlds uh, and you reach more people that way, but also it's useful for AR development. There's a lot of photogrammetry worlds in VR chat that I could test out AR in um, and my r real environment is not uh, have enough use cases i guess to cover for it's very minimal so that's my hopes overlay systems um via the browser for for that uh web xr composability um mr classy penguin guy <clears throat> what are my hopes well for apple not to kneecap uh the web on whatever headset <laughs> they release <laughs> uh, we'll see and we, uh, big composability interop, that's huge. That's my biggest hope. Amen. And um, with that, I just want to give a round of applause for all of our guests panelists today. This has been an awesome panel. <laughs> and uh, more if uh, you can play us out. Um, thanks everyone for joining. The sound guy, can you yeah. play the air horn? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>